RB. A year ago, I stood here in front of you and I talked about a contract crisis that had become a lightning rod for the anger of a generation of doctors feeling alone, undervalued, and unprotected in a system stretched beyond reason. That dissatisfaction is felt by the whole profession. We feel it every time application system failures throw trainees' lives into disarray, or when junior doctors are intimidated about speaking out on worsening conditions, or when trainees are punished for trying to deliver the best possible care despite impossible circumstances. Working in failing systems or without adequate support, our junior doctors have become the canary in the mine of our health service. We heard again yesterday how strongly our profession feels about Dr. Bawa Garba's case, because we can so easily see ourselves in similar circumstances. The BMA have reached out to Dr. Bawa Garba, and I have offered her our support on behalf of the entire association. We will do whatever we can to fight for doctors across all four nations so that we are supported and that our actions are not criminalized by organizations all too willing to abdicate their own responsibilities. We went to the GMC and got them to deliver meaningful assurances that the way they deal with doctors raising concerns will be protective and not punitive. But we are also campaigning for the removal of the GMC's right to appeal the MPTS and for the legal changes required to give trainees the confidence to reflect and learn from significant events. When you feel undervalued and isolated, it is easy to become angry and frustrated and disengaged from the political process. But as representatives, we have to do more than that. We need to be better than that. Because despite all of the negativity and despair, we have a responsibility to our colleagues to constructively tackle problems. By being in the room, we have worked collaboratively with employers to provide comprehensive and positive guidance on good rostering, ensuring employers honor the safeguards in the 2016 contract, taking steps to minimize fatigue and value less than full-time doctors, as well as those who work non-resident on call. We've produced a fatigue and facilities charter, which has been adopted nationally in Wales and by increasing numbers of employers and trusts across the UK, making both doctors and their patients safer. In England, the Enhancing Junior Doctors Working Lives Group, of which we are a founding member, has reported on the tangible progress we have made to improve the educational and working experiences of junior doctors. We've helped to improve the flexibility in our job application systems. And when the physician's ST3 application process went wrong, we stood up for our members, working with the RCP London and ensuring our trainees received the support they needed and the jobs that they deserved. We pushed to enforce notice periods for new jobs and rosters via a new code of practice. Alongside this, our lobbying has led to 10 million pounds of investment into projects to support trainees returning to the clinical environment after time away for any reason. We have helped to improve access to study budgets, which will reimburse thousands of pounds to trainees and to maintain access to aspirational courses, as well as those required for curriculum progression. For those on the new contract, we have worked to ensure that the role of the guardian of safe working and the system of exception reporting acts as a serious and supportive system, which not only allows them to raise concerns, but crucially, to have those concerns addressed in real time. 
we have started to see attitudes soften, extra staff hired, and rotor patterns changed. This is a system that can work when it is properly supported and properly implemented. And in a stretched and struggling NHS, it could not be more crucial that we continue to work with local representatives, as well as NHS Improvement and other organizations. The junior doctor contract dispute in England led to a total breakdown in employment relations and left our membership polarized. My team and I have worked hard to rebuild relations and make real improvements to all aspects of juniors' lives, as well as the contract, despite remaining in dispute. RB, it has taken months of work, but we will now be full participants in a formal collaborative review and bargaining process to improve the imposed 2016 contract. Whilst we remain in dispute over the unilateral introduction of the contract, we will take part in the 2018 review to make changes wherever they are needed as equal partners. The final agreed deal will then be put to our members. It has not, it has not always been easy, but I am very proud of what JDC has achieved and how far we have come. None of that, however, would have been possible without the support of our incredible staff. Thank you. In many areas, we have forced genuine change, change that will affect thousands of lives for the better and for which we must fight on. Sometimes change is gradual, it is incremental, can even be frustrating, but it always matters. It is always worth fighting for a better workplace. It is always worth fighting for a better NHS. It is always worth fighting for a better future. And that is what we will continue to do with your help. Thank you, RB.